Delta is 180 square kilometers on the west coast of Canada. The population of Delta is 108,000 people approximately. Delta's crime rate is, is really low compared to the provincial and the national average. I'm Jim Ingram. I'm the operations advisory NCO for Delta Police. I'm also the NCO in charge of the public safety operations group. How did you know you start using drones and has the program been growing over the past few years? Delta brought our first drone in 2017. We built it from a single drone up into the 12 airframes that we have right now. With the Drone as a First Responder program, we're able to launch a drone and get the drone on scene without having to drive police cars through traffic, without putting anybody at risk. And it enhances our effectiveness to keep them safer and also our officers safer when they're responding to calls for service. With the DOC2, we're able to get the drone on scene potentially within four minutes of the pilot being aware of a call. We have responded to a couple calls in progress in one instance where there was a break and enter in progress, we were able to get the drone on scene relatively quickly and identify some potential suspects that were leaving the area. So it's already starting to see some benefit that way. We worked really closely with Transport Canada. As we defined our concept of operations and talked about how we wanted to use the drone, we had to go through and do our air risk assessment and our ground risk assessments. We then had to develop our mitigation strategies. Once we put those documents together, Transport Canada also audited our program in order to assess the, the risk management document and then approve the SFOC. I'm Thomas Barter. I'm with CanDrone and my primary focus and client base is the law enforcement, public safety, safety sector. Prior to installing the Dock 2 on their uh, headquarters site, we uh, brought our own Dock 2 and our team of Dock 2 experts as part of Transport Canada's requirements for the SFOC to test the signal strength at the location and to determine if there were any obstructions to factor in. Getting our SFOC set up, getting the technology and training the pilots, it's been a challenge, uh, but it's definitely been rewarding being one of the first departments in Canada to launch the Drone as a First Responder program. Having CanDrone come out and help us get the system set up the first time, get it positioned properly, get us introduced to the software. It's always good to have that vendor come in to make sure that we're aware of all the capabilities. My name is Harj Sidhu. I'm currently the Chief of the Delta Police Department, which I was recently promoted to. Prior to that, I was the Deputy Chief and I've been with the Delta Police Department for a little over 30 years. So we started seeing Chula Vista was one of the ones we know that had been deploying a DFR program for a long time. So I remember saying to our team, okay, is that something we can do here? We did have a few inquiries of how, you know, we would control it, you know, was it safe to fly over and all those type of things. And if we expand it further, we want to make sure that we're continuously communicating with our community as to how we're using this technology and listening to their concerns. When we have a scene, you know, we have that information now, maybe it's not as serious as it initially came through dispatch, that our officers can slow down. So they're safer, the community's safer. We have to be able to adapt, be okay with the new technology and integrate that with the new policing ways. Being able to have a drone as a first responder on scene it makes a world of difference. So as far as hardware capabilities, we're concerned obviously about the IP rating. We see a lot of rain. So being able to operate through the majority of the year is a huge benefit for us. As well, being able to fly at night, the thermal vision camera is a big thing, being able to find suspects and targets at night. I feed for the drones into the same software that we use for situational awareness where we can stream the body cams, our dash cams and, and other technology. From a software standpoint, we're able to return to home if the uh, connection is lost or if the, the battery has issues. We're also able to use geofencing to avoid flying in areas where, it, where we don't want to fly around high-rise buildings and that sort of thing. So from a hardware perspective, we're able to mitigate the ground risk because we are using a parachute. The hardware itself has got a Transport Canada safety declaration that allows it to fly over people. And we're also relying on some surveillance technologies like ADSB for aircraft that are flying in the vicinity. The next steps for the program will be deploying multiple docks throughout the city of Delta. So we do have a flooding risk, especially in our low lying areas and being on the Pacific Rim, we're the highest risk for earthquakes in Canada as well. Right now we're using it for rapid scene assessment in uh, patrol capacity but we're looking to implement it and build it into the city's emergency management plan where we're able to assess critical infrastructure after a disaster and build a, a far more robust emergency management plan that way. I see this really expanding further and our long-term vision is if we could have these strategically placed around our city it would give us that real situational awareness wherever something is happening and further expanding that right into our emergency management program. What's let's say most important a piece of advice you've given to other other police departments considering a DFR program? 
come up with a, a product or a solution that's going to integrate well into your systems, your policies, and, and how your department uh, responds to crimes in progress.